Welcome, this is a summary of the Action Team's six follow-up initiative meeting at the UN campus in Bonn, organized by the University of Koblenz London in cooperation with the United Nations uh, Office of Outer Space Affairs uh, under the program of space education hosted by UN SPIDER. If you have any questions um, According to this uh, summary of the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative meeting at the UN campus in Bonn, you can contact us at, at the email address specialpublichealth at uh, uni-landau.de. The summary will give you a brief overview of the history and origin of the workshop, the scope of the initiative, the time frame, the structure, and the main thing is the open source, open content, open community approach with the, some details of the organizing of the conference and the results of the workshop. The Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is based on the Unispace 3 recommendation and the work of the Action Team 6 um, improve public health by application of space technology. Um, the UN OSA Action Team 6 was established in 2001 and continued to work uh, in different phases until 2012 and was closed by uh, the Chair Canada um, in 2012. Furthermore, in February 2012, a side meeting as a follow-up uh, of the Action Team 6 at COPWAS was uh, held at the UN uh, facilities in Vienna. Our chair was Canada. In 2012, July, August, uh, the expert meeting was held at the UN campus in Bonn at the first uh, activity of the Action Team 6 follow up initiative. In comparison to the Action Team 6, the Action Team 7 uh, evolved from an action team into a United Nations program uh, for disaster management and application of space technology called UN SPIDER. Um, so this is just mentioned for a comparison to the involvement of the different action teams. Now we're coming to the scope of the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative. Um, we're promoting improvement of public health by application of space technology in the area of spatial epidemiology and spatial ecotoxicology. This term spatial includes all aspects of space and spatial concepts of risk and response to perform epidemiological and ecotoxicological investigations and predictions, namely public health, geomatics and teleepidemiology. This whole concept is integrated in the One Health perspective, looking on environmental health and public health. In the context of spatial decision support systems, um, we are dealing with uh, spatial temporal patterns of public health risk or global health risk and tailored allocation of limited resources uh, for risk mitigation. This concept is structural equivalent to WHO capacity building program in which self-assessment frameworks are directly linked to risk mitigation tools uh, developed by WHO. Um, now we are looking more closely on the time frame and the structure of Action Team 6 follow-up initiative. The Action Team 6 follow-up initiative have two main components. One is the site meeting at the COPOS in Vienna in February every year and six months later the workshop um, based on an open community approach in July August every year. The site meetings at the COPOS in Vienna in February every year are political facilitators for risk mitigation strategies. The workshops are co open communities of practice for development uh, of risk mitigation strategies and optimized allocation of public health resources. In more detail, the site meetings um, at the COPOAS, there were participants had to be appointed as delegates by the member states, especially for multinational public health activities, support in the guiding framework of national public health activities is necessary. Citing to provide recommendations to the open community of practice. The open community of practice is 
in annual workshops until 2015, where a wider target audience for knowledge sharing, development and implementation is addressed by promoting teleepidemiology, ecotoxicology and public health. An open community response can be triggered by member states and the open community will provide open content, open source resources for risk mitigation and resource allocation for the member states. After the three years, the final milestone will be a final report into the COPOS with a definition of the next steps. At the end of the three years, we have definitely three options. One is the closed initiative to prolong the initiative for more years or to integrate it in other UN initiatives. The yearly workshops are based on an open community approach, so we define uh, this concept first. Open community approach. Open community is a generalization of the concept of open source to other collaborative effort. The term open for an open community refers to the opportunity for anyone to join and contribute to the collaborative effort. The direction and the goals are determined collaboratively by, the, by all members of the community. The resulting work, the product, is made available under a free license so that other communities can adapt and build on them. In this context, the product is, uh, of the open community is an improved public health by application of space technology. In more detail, the open community approach provides open products. Existing open products or enhanced open products tailored to the needs of public health or global public health challenges. The open community is structural equivalent to open source or open content communities. You might know some open source communities for developing of GIS software like Rust, Quantum GIS, Saga and so on, or OpenOffice. Or you might know open communities for open content. Uh, the product might be a Wikipedia. For the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative, open source software like uh, Saga, Rust or Quantum GIS are relevant open source products. On the on good content side, the development of e-learning courses in spatial epidemiology are examples of open content developments in 86 follow-up initiative. The Action Team 6 follow-up initiative operates on a joint repository of resources. Um, these resources are not necessarily developed for the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative but because they are open source, they can directly use um, freely for the member states for risk mitigation strategies. What is the main benefit of open source development cycles? First of all, you take an existing open source software and you have to add maybe 10% workload so that it fully meets your requirements and constraints of the application. The next release with your improved features will be available for the open community 100% uh, free. The next user group adds uh, by adding 15% workload and other relevant features um, to the software package which might be very, very helpful and will be added to the next release and will be helpful for the, all the community members for free 100%. This development of cycle introduces enlarges um, the features of an existing software, debugs the software, uh, improves software's um, performance and uh, the whole development process is based on adding workload, improves the software, provided free back to the community. Open source software in the context of Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is designed as an alternative to commercial software when financial constraints do not allow to, uh, to use commercial software equivalents. To identify the ratio between the workload and the free available software resources, I looked on an 11 hours activity on one of the open source platforms called uh, sourceforge.net. Uh, during this 11 hours we had uh, about more than 4 million downloads which are equivalent to 100% free usage 
And during that time, we had 4,000 code commits, which are a kind of improvements of the existing uh, software packages, 4,000 forum posts, and uh, about 450 bug tracks. So, uh, all, all of again, the 1.1% are improvements, 1.1% um, are discussions about new features and problems, and 0.01% are error reports of existing software. Um, this is a non-representative uh, statistical data on 11 hours on one day, and it might be different on special uh, software development projects, especially new ones. Um, the software itself is just one component in a whole problem-solving strategy for risk mitigation and for public health challenges. The capacity building and learning environment is the first step for application of the software. So around this uh, open source software, for example, um, Crash GIS or Quantum GIS, we have the course material for spatial epidemiology, we have open content support tutorials, uh, frequently asked questions, support and the community forum. And we have open geodata, for example, free mapping resources like humanitarian open street map uh, or other um, free mapping resources, open geodata, which can be used for the capacity building learning environment. It operates on generated sample data so that the learners can I, uh, get experience how the software will work for risk mitigation problem solving and maybe optimize resource allocation. Because the software is free and open, it can be easily accessed by the learner and used at home for capacity building and training and especially in learning environments. This is relevant for the total cost of ownership, especially for developing countries. The support material will be provided for the open source software only because it is assumed that those agencies who can afford commercial software can also afford to buy the support for this software as well. The developing countries might be not the case, so the open source alternative should be freely available for the uh, developing countries. The capacity building framework can be easily transferred into a productive system with real public health data by replacing the sample data of the learning environment just by national or WHO public health data. This is embedded in the strategies for moving from high cost to low cost solutions. The high cost solutions might be available only for uh, member states there or agencies which have the money available, low-cost solutions might be uh, easy accessible, especially for developing countries. You might lose position or performance from high-cost to low-cost solutions, but this is not necessarily the case. For example, if you replace commercial uh, geographic information system by uh, open source systems, you might increase uh, some performance parameters as well. The main economic objective is to reduce the total cost of ownership of the application of technology for risk mitigation in public health sector. This increases in turn the number of people that can apply the solution or can afford the solution. But even if you have the money for the application of high-cost solutions, it might be reasonable to move on to low-cost solution because by this uh, transformation from high-cost to low-cost, you can increase the repetition or the, revolution of, or the resolution of an experiment. So you increase the temple or spatial resolution of, uh, re uh, resolution of monitoring experiments, which uh, might be um, ex uh, implemented in many areas of a member state for risk mitigation in the public health sector. Independent of the budget you have, in any case you have a limited uh, available financial resource and this cuts off the access to certain high-cost solutions. 
uh, visualized in this uh, figure, we have three, uh, three solutions, one high cost solution, one solution two, and th solution three that exceed the available financial resources. And furthermore, there are low cost solution four and five, which do not exceed the financial uh, available resources. The provision of low cost solutions um, can provide uh, risk mitigation strategies in the areas where no um, solutions were available before due to the uh, financial constraints of the member state or an agency. This concept was applied on the pilot of the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative in August this year uh, as well. So we moved on from a high-cost conference to a sort of low-cost conference. The pilot worked on uh, local and regional meeting points where you have face-to-face -face meetings and a virtual connect video conferencing connectivity to other uh, local and regional meeting points. And during the pilot phase, we had only 25 participants and maximum 19 network nodes at, at the same time uh, for a testing purpose. Um, by this concept, we get the best of two worlds, the mixed virtual um, international connectivity for reduction of um, travel expenses and uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, component at the local and regional meeting points. Reduced uh, the financial and time constraints for participation and we, by this concept we can increase the number of people that can join the conference. Because the presentations are video presentations in a special public health uh, video channel, um, the minimal time necessary for the rental is at, uh, approximately 30 minutes for being in a virtual uh, video conference for uh, answering questions or respond to feedback to the presentation. Furthermore, the video pre presentations are itself um, contributions to the joint repository of resources because they can access online uh, at any time, at any place with uh, network connectivity. In the, they can be downloaded uh, and viewed even in places where there's no network connectivity by taking the video downloads to that place where um, the presentation should be shown. Um, as mentioned before, the access to technology, capacity building and a problem solving environment is highly relevant for the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative. So the pilot tested how this mixed mode face-to-face -face at local and regional meeting points and international connectivity via video conference and how this is operational. Uh, according to this approach from high cost to low cost, we have uh, very costly face-to-face um, -face conferences and workshops only with high travel expenses, which have, of course, a plus with, uh, with the face-to-face -face only um, presentation of uh, workshops and answering and feedback. Um, if you can increase the, the, the money necessary for the workshop, but then you have less participants, the tested pilot of the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative is a virtual conference with uh, regional meeting points. The UN campus in Bonn was the regional meeting points with at least uh, 25 participants um, with international con connectivity to South Africa, El Salvador and India. Technically, we had minor problems with the um, with connectivity and access to the, the, to the video conferencing server, but mainly the communication workflows and the support of the communication can be improved uh, in many areas according to the feedback provided by the participants. And thank you for that. The pilot can be recommended for a global public health challenges uh, for example, chronic uh, kidney diseases, uh, which are present in, in different countries. 
and uh, at local and regional meeting points uh, stakeholders are gathering from that member states so they have less uh, travel expenses and international connectivity to other regional and local meeting points. We heard about high cost and low cost solution, the open community approach, open source, open content. But there's one main issue which is quality assurance in the whole concept. The red part in this slide is uh, uh, highlights the joint repository of open resources, open content, the Spatial Public Health YouTube channel, the videos for the conference itself as a resource, uh, or course material for spatial epidemiology, wiki books, or all that courses for capacity building. Um, this open content approach, open community approach, is only one side. When it uh, comes to organizational structures like United Nations University, UN OSA, United Nations Program on Space Application, WHO, uh, which can share uh, and distribute this uh, knowledge to other member states, it's relevant that this uh, content is quality assured. A quality assurance framework has to be arranged around this joint repository of resources of the open community of practice. Um, first of all, research can provide evidence for risk and, uh, and efficient mitigation strategies for public health risk. On the other hand, the United Nations member states can have uh, a national assessment of uh, risk mitigation strategies and improvement strategies for the public health risk. Any open community of practice results uh, are communicated to the site meeting so that political approval process can be initiated by that communication between the two components of the three years initiative. Furthermore, open content uh, risk reduction strategies or capacity building material must pass the quality assurance of WHO before it can be published on the portal of WHO. Then we have a closer look on the, uh, on the subject that the Action Team 6 follow-up initiative, we link the space technology to the public health problems. First of all, risk mapping and remote sensing are linked to this uh, area of uh, global public health problem by detecting environmental parameters that trigger vectors, for, uh, for example, uh, the replication zone for mosquitoes and the fly range of mosquitoes can determine risk areas uh, which can be used for public warnings or uh, risk mitigation strategies for vector control units. We talked about open source uh, geographic information systems. Um, the remote sensing data are stored in a geographic information system. Uh, the mosquito models, for example, operate on the environmental data and uh, will be used for context dependent. Uh, um, access to environmental conditions and predictions for the mosquito development cycle. Furthermore, on this conference, monitoring system, low-cost monitoring systems are discussed uh, for detecting spatial patterns of uh, public health risks, for example, cro uh, chronic kidney diseases. And uh, these monitoring results are fed into the geographic information system. So if we want to reach the people that are exposed to public health risk, then it is necessary to consider mobile devices. According to these risk mapping strategies and the spatial decision support system, we have risk maps in the geographic information system and uh, uh, the smartphones with the GP integrated GPS can access this risk layer and respond to geographical risk to, um, according to the provided geolocation of the smartphone, for example. By this basic concept, the smartphone becomes a type of, of GPS pseudo-measurement. It doesn't have sensors for contamination of water, soil and air, for food, vegetables and meat, radioactive uh, radiation as a public health risk or epidemiological risk at the GPS location. But by providing the GPS location, to a GIS risk mapping server, um, the server can return the public health risk at the GPS location or can suggest access to risk mitigation uh, resources or provide uh, awareness 
uh, programs for the certain area of public health risk. The mobile device becomes a decision support client for public health risk. GPS pseudo machine is defined as an indirect provision of sensor data without a physical sensor by using the GPS location of the mobile device. The simplest example is the, the radiation. So the smartphone provides the GPS location to a GIS mismapping server with the radiation information and the radiation is returned to the smartphone or the user. Chronic kidney disease as a major public health problem in El Salvador, Nicaragua and other, other countries are discussed on the workshop. The question was how can space technology uh, support the implementation of risk mitigation strategies for farm workers? The underlying idea is uh, to combine economic and public health benefits. By a normalized difference vegetation index, we can uh, EVI, we can detect the crop health and the crop health GIS. By providing this information to a smartphone, a tailored um, low-tech low precision farming approach could be realized, which supports the campesinos for applying agrochemical X at rate Y at certain geolocation, according to the crop health structure in that area. So the mobile device is again decision support client for the spatial application of agrochemicals. The reduction uh, of the application of agrochemicals uh, creates an economic benefit on the one side and a public health benefit on the other side. Besides the precision farming benefits, which are mainly economic uh, improvements, Public health objectives are food security, minimize exposure to agrochemicals for the farm workers and environment, and a workflow communication and self protection of workers, and especially optimize spatial patterns of the application of agrochemicals. Uh, what are the information provided by the smartphones? So, the smartphones, um, in terms of um, um, augmented reality consists of an icon, an extract, and a URL. And the icon will be an arrow or an, a spatial information, a text message, apply agrochemical X to, uh, at rate Y, and a URL for further information. Web based content provides geolocation. Here is the Wikipedia page on the United Nations office in Vienna, and it provides a short abstract provides icons and URLs for further content. Icons can be integrated in the camera image uh, for the smartphone. For example, this uh, United Nations uh, icon. When you click on that icon, you get the, the abstract of the web page or um, capacity building material or warning, public health warning, or whatever you think the abstract uh, could stand for in the public health content. And you have the geolocation of the area and the multimedia content for uh, the public health facility resources. Ramesh Krishnamurti from WHO uh, posed a challenge to the open community to provide a kind of infrastructure in the, in the pilot for uh, um, collecting the healthcare facilities and uh, store them in a database. Marcus Niedler and his team provided as a pilot during the conference a web core solution for indexing the healthcare facilities. This is an important step for solutions that make uh, healthcare facilities or public health resources accessible to the public and provide tailored response to uh, public health risk according to the geolocation of the user. Future steps um, of the initiative will show how far are we from uh, establishing a magnetic reality resource index that can be used for um, invisible public health risks and uh, appropriate response and risk mitigation strategy. For commercial applications, uh, the GPS smartphone is used to provide tailored advertisements according to the uh, geolocation of the user. This principle is directly transferred to the public health uh, sector 
in a way that um, the um, risk information is provided tailored to the user. One important step is that it also must be usable offline when there is no internet connectivity. So this leads again to uh, the application of free um, geodata, for example OpenStreetMap as a risk layer, download them, to the, download them to the smartphone, use them offline, collect data for example, and when there is online access again, they return it to the GIS server. This concept is already available with OpenStreetMap and the uh, open source navigation software Navit. You can download certain areas of OpenStreetMap, download them to your smartphone and use them for navigation in the area of interest. When we summarize the content area, we have on the one side the remote sensing data for environmental conditions, uh, crop health, that detect, um, that support risk mitigation strategies for farm workers or the environmental condition can provide for prediction methods. Remote sensing data are pre-processed and stored in the geographic information system. It has to be open source for the open community approach, for example, GRASS, the geographic resource analysis support system. It contains the risk maps, the resource maps, and maybe also the RC in the interface uh, to the indexer where uh, public health resources or public health risk is stored and visualized with the smartphone. The spatial decision support system connects to the smartphone with the GPS location and the GPS uh, location provides uh, information on invisible risks to the user or provides guidance and support for public awareness and risk mitigation structures at the geolocation of the user. That is. Summary. Um, the first milestone was uh, accomplished finishing the pilot of a virtual meeting with uh, local face-to-face -face meeting points. Um, we the proof of concept was finished to 80% and 25% is necessary for the feedback analysis and the provision of the results on the home page so that uh, the upcoming next meetings can use this information for improving this type of virtual low cost meeting. The second milestone is the combination of creating capacity building material with video presentations for a conference. This was uh, um, also a proof of concept which was 90% accomplished and there's still 10% uh, for optimization, optimization especially for the support of the users for creating this video material. Um, we accomplished the third milestone which uh, shows that the virtual content will be applicable for 25 network nodes especially individual participants or local and regional meeting points. For the minimum variant of this uh, type of meeting, it is applicable for a special interest group with 25 individual people from all over the world, focusing on a special public health subject. And maximum will be a larger conference with 25 network nodes and 50 people per node, which makes it to 1,250 people joining a larger conference. Uh, which increase the face-to-face -face part at the local and regional meeting points and increases international connectivity by the virtual uh, connection of uh, the network nodes. The fourth network is uh, creating a basic introduction to the open community approach to the participants. Furthermore, um, for such type of event, the security must be considered. First of all, the security of United Nations events are ensured by the kind of host country agreement which is necessary. Uh, for United Nations premises, the security infrastructure is available, so it was for the United, uh, UN campus in Bonn. With this type of conference with uh, uh, local and regional meeting points scattered all over the world in different time zones, is necessary to ensure the security for the participants at these local and regional meeting points as well. Some kind of equivalent to the host country agreement might be necessary for this local and regional meeting points um, or recommendation for single point users at a 
uh, special network node um, that joined the conference. Beside the necessary administrative and uh, technical improvements for the for the pilot, um, the whole conference web page is open content they accept the icons uh, so that uh, other initiatives and agency can use that for their purpose as well. Further information according to this uh, Action Team 6 follow-up initiative will be um, accessible on this uh, URL mentioned in the last line. If you have any comments or questions according to this Action Team 6 follow-up initiative, please uh, contact the following email address. Thank you for listening and goodbye.